Hello all, um, welcome to today's webinar. So this webinar is the first webinar for week eight. We have our second webinar on Thursday, but today, Tuesday the 5th is for how to create a pitch presentation. And we are glad to have you all here. We're just going to give a little more time for more participants to join and we'll kick off officially. So my name is Success Eugene and I'll be moderating today's webinar. So uh, before more people join, I just want to give a little announcement. Please, if you register for the pitch competition and you are yet to send in your video, deadline is on Sunday. So try to send it in as soon as you can. And uh, with that said, I think we have uh, a good number now. So once again, I'll introduce myself. Um, I'm Success Eugene and like you know, I've been posting on the group and I'm WMI Leadership Skill and Development Coordinator, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. So today's webinar is for week eight, and for week eight, we have how to create a pitch competition, uh, a pitch, pitch presentation, sorry, how to create a pitch presentation, and then we'll have, after that, we'll talk about how to, um, what you need to finalize before submitting your pitch, and that will be in the question and answer Session. So we have our presenter with us here today, and our presenter is Sofina um, Merino, as you can see her name on the screen. And today she'll be presenting on how to create a pitch presentation. So let me give a brief intro of our presenter for today. Sofina Merino is a radical um, advocate for youth education and development, a social change catalyst, a pan-Africanist, a podcast host and a writer. She's keen to ensure every African child has access to quality education and every youth has access to opportunities for advancement. Her work and volunteer experience in the nonprofit sector has accorded her vast experience and competencies in program management, training and facilitation, project evaluations, partnership development, data analysis and report writing. Sofina has gained experience working at Imagine Leaders Foundation, with Habiti Africa, Shima Foundation, and Impact Direct. Her depth, breadth, and knowledge on how to engage professionally comes from her foundational training in community resource management from Kenyatta University, certification in public management and social transformation from Arizona State University, as well as training at the Young African Leadership Initiative, YALI, and governance and political leadership and governance program, PLGP. She has a passion for good leadership and social justice and would like to be in a position to advocate for equal rights for all children in, on the continent. She currently serves as the board member at the Inspired Nations Foundation, Garden of Hope Foundation, Secretary General at the Imara Fellowship Alumni Association, and she is a mentor with Global Give Back Circle and Food for Education. So um, quite a profile. Thank you so much, Sofina, for joining us today. And we are really excited at what you have um, for us today. And before she comes on board and starts um, letting out all the juice from her presentation, I want to encourage everyone, please, uh, put in your questions. If you have any questions, any concerns at all, put it in, 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 the, in the chat, whether it's for the pitch presentation on, um, on the 12th, or you have questions as she starts her presentation, please put it in the chat. I will be glad to attend to it at the end of the webinar. All right, thank you so much again. Um, over to you, Sophina. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Success. It's a great pleasure to engage with all 27 of you. Um, I think like you've mentioned uh, today, uh, we'll be looking to tackle the subject of creating an effective pitch presentation. And Success, I just want to appreciate you for the introduction that you've been able to give of me, because I think our pitching what I do, you know, uh, working as a consultant is one of the key skills I've been able to gain um, over time. So thank you so much for this opportunity to engage each and every one of you. And so, uh, you know, you having just shared a brief background of who is in the room, uh, probably I'd like to hear a voice or two and just to, you know, writing down to understand what do you hope 
to gain by the end of this hour, uh, the next about 53 minutes that we have. So I'll open the floor, two or three people, just share with us, uh, what do you hope to gain at the end of this presentation? Feel free to raise your hand, put it in the chat, but I'd love to hear from you. We can start the pitching exercise right from here. I can see Derek. Derek says to organize and polish my ideas for future project pitching. Amazing. Someone else? I want to hear from you. Remember, this is going to be a very engaging session. When we talk about pitching, what do you understand by that? Uh-huh, video making. All right, all right, Ayesha. Uh, that's a very interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sharon, Sharon Moweza, I can see your hand. Sharon Moweza. For success, please help me coordinate as I cannot uh, hear. Um, I yeah, think I've I just allowed, took... I've, I've allowed them to talk, so. Um... All right, all right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you for that. Uh, Sharon, you can go ahead before I go back to the comment section. All right, uh, probably before Sharon. Sharon, there you go. Um, yeah, yes, thank you so much. So at the end of this uh, uh, webinar, all I want is to, to make sure that I understand how to put all my information in one and be mm -hmm. able to present in three minutes. Uh, beautiful, yeah. I love that. <laughs> all right, thank you for that, Sharon. Um, Thank you. I'm also able to see from the comment section, Maury says, greetings from Sierra Leone. We'll be looking forward to emphasis on the pitch relevance and potential benefits of video pitch. Amazing. And then I can see uh, Derek Moesi says, presenting ideas or products to prospective customers or funders. And Francis says, to learn to express my business plan to potential supporters. Mohammed says to craft a winning message that the audience can be able to understand. And Innocent mentions to express your idea to convince someone. You know, uh, I feel like there's no need uh, to, to, to mention <laughs> the purpose of a pitch presentation because you've been able to handle that in answering why do we want to know about a pitch presentation. Um, I can see um, Paul says to be persuasive you know, probably towards a business that you have or towards a project that you have, or sometimes even to be able to just uh, have a conversation and convince someone. So uh, today uh, in our presentation, we are going to look at the end of it, all what you've mentioned, but most importantly, uh, how to have an effective presentation. And so uh, very fast, I want to take you through uh, what we will cover. So number one, we will cover how to craft a winning pitch. I know it's very interesting uh, that I'm talking about a winning pitch, but I think it's very important that I start with a confession. So in creating a, a very uh, uh, beautiful performance, you know how you have the online uh, applications to help you with your design work? 
So it seems that uh, just towards the last minutes of preparing this, everything has been working, but the wordings um, tended to go a bit off offline. So we'll have to proceed with the presentation, but you'll bear with me. So the ones um, which will not be showing clearly, I'll just be able to take us through them. Um, but you know, so in this discussion, number one, we look at how to craft a winning presentation. Number two, we look at the structure of a winning preach presentation. After that, um, you know, there are some of us who are in here, I believe, like myself, who are saying, well, I don't have a business idea. I don't have an organization. I don't have a project. The product is actually myself. So how am I able to pitch myself as a professional? So we'll also be able to look at that. How do you, how do you pitch your brand as a professional? And then towards the end, I'll give you tips, important tips tips on how you can carry out an effective pitch presentation, regardless of who you're speaking to, where you are, and whom uh, you're engaging with. And then after that, uh, we're going to have a follow-up engagement after pitching. You know, it's very interesting uh, because most of us think, uh, once I've spoken to you, uh, you know, someone mentioned an elevator pitch. Once you've met someone, uh, who you'd like to invest in your business and you've told them about what you do, we tend to think that it ends there. But you'd be surprised. Uh, it's actually encouraged to have follow-up engagements after your pitch. And I'll be taking you um, through that. So I want us to start with the, uh, you know, with the first slide, how to craft a winning pitch. I'd love to surprise you. You know, I had the, the whole idea of getting uh, on, the, on the screen one point after the other. But nevertheless, we'll work with what we've got. So number one, um, I think the most important thing is know your audience. Know whom you're pitching to. Why? This enables you to determine what information to include and how to frame it. I want to give you a very good example, something very practical. All of us are from campus. Are, I'm based in Kenya. I'm based in Nairobi, Kenya. So one of the key things I've seen students uh, be able to sell when, when they're on campus, especially for ladies, I think ladies who can be able to relate with this is uh, selling uh, beauty products, okay? So they're able to, uh, to, to sell uh, different beauty products. And what happens is when it comes to knowing your audience, uh, imagine you are pitching to the registrar, you're pitching to the registrar of the university and you're asking them to give you an opportunity, um, probably uh, somewhere in the school grounds, to be able to establish a shop, okay? To sell your beauty products. And then know your audience. In another scenario, you are pitching to your fellow students to buy your beauty products. You'd get to realize how you pitch to these two different people is, to, to these two people is very different in the approach that you make. So uh, the point here is it's very important to know your audience because when you know your audience, you're able to know how to frame it. And so, you know, you could be pitching in front of a potential investor. Um, you know, you want to focus on their business financials. You want to tell them, in my business, if you invest X amount of money, I'll actually be able to multiply uh, your investment by two. You know, you're pitching to the school regi uh, registrar. Probably you're telling him, you know, for you, the, the institution, the university is keen on supporting entrepreneurial ventures by students. So hence, I'm coming to you to request for this space uh, to, to have my shop. And maybe to the students, all you have to say is, this is the best smelling perfume you will ever meet in this country. I advise you to buy it from me. So number one, when you're crafting your pitch, it's very important that you know your audience. And because when you pitch a right, the right way to the right audience, you're able uh, to get, you know, if it's clients or whatever you're looking for. If you're pitching the wrong way, then your message is not able uh, to get across very well. Number two, keep it simple. I think for me, in everything that we do, I always emphasize clarity, clarity, clarity. It's important for each and every one of us as you engage, make sure um, whatever you're communicating is simple and concise. You know, sometimes we feel, uh, especially, you know, probably if it's a business, and again, it also depends on who you're pitching to. If it's a business, you feel when you use the technical terms, eh, someone will look at you and say, they know what they're speaking about. But half the times, they're actually not understanding what you're speaking about. So it's very important that you ensure that you avoid jargon. 
uh, when you when you when you know when you're speaking and make sure that everyone is able to understand. The third thing, you know, just have relevant information. While it's good to have all the knowledge and information when you're pitching, you know what? Pitch the relevant points. Then after that, if they share with you their email address or their contact details, you have your uh, organizational brochures, uh, you have your, your business pamphlets, you can be able to share that and they're able to, to, to get more information. So I think just to encourage you is make sure that you keep it focused to the main points. Number three, tell a story. Tell a story. In fact, it, uh, that shows that people remember stories more than they remember uh, statistics. And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you something. You know, our, for those of us who are book readers, okay, well, it's pretty obvious that Chimamada, you know, we're able to listen to her because she tells a story. But of late, Chimamada has been talking to global issues. And how does she do this? Through her gift of storytelling, she gets uh, the point across, especially when it comes to matters to do with Africa and, you know, just uh, um, outlining the plight of, of, of different instances that are facing Africans. Um, just to give a good example, I remember on YouTube, you can get a video where she talks about uh, facing uh, discrimination in going into France um, because she's Black. But how she delivered that was very seamless, just telling the story of her own experience. And I think um, the point got across uh, to the France government that really, if someone has undergone all the checkpoints to get there, there is no need to harass them um, at the border. So make sure to tell your story. Uh, let, it, let it be something that is relatable uh, to the audience that you're listening to. And then the final thing, focus on the benefits. I'll go back to my example. You are pitching about your beauty products. Now, imagine you going and pitching beauty products to the male students. And here you are telling the male students, you know what? Um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of something, you know, all of us can relate to. Our... Well, let me just use the perfume example. And you're telling the man, you're going to smell like a sunflower. And these are African men. They're looking like you, at you and they're like, really? It will be nice to smell like a sunflower. But I think uh, the important thing is, you know, you need to be able to focus on the benefits. So, you know, when you're approaching the ladies, it's very easy when you tell them about smelling like a sun, sunflower. This is something they're able to relate to. And so when you're crafting your pitch, please just make sure you focus on the benefits. Uh, make sure your products and, and your services Focus on your benefits that the audience will experience and benefits that are relatable um, to them. And you know what? Some of the questions you can ask yourself is what problem does your product or service solve? You can also ask yourself, how will it make your audience's life easier? And you know, with this, it helps you to create a persuasive pitch. And you'll realize I'm very general, uh, you know, just taking into accord and acknowledging the fact that here we have our, our different individuals involved in the business sector, and we have also have different individuals involved in the, in the NGO sector and who have organizations, and also just acknowledging the fact that we have individuals who offer services as consultants or they're developing their brand, for example, being uh, musicians and artists and the like. And so, um, you know, the first thing I mentioned, I'll go step by step. I talked about knowing and identifying your target audience. Very simple example I've used, my beauty products. The first thing you need to do is segmentation. And this is whereby you understand your target audience's demographics, interests, and needs to tailor your pitch specifically to them. So for the beauty products, that's why I mentioned while it's nice to go to the boys and tell them you can buy this for your mother and for your sister and for your loved ones, it will be more strategic if you broke down and said, you know, my number one target will be the ladies and then the others can come down. So when you're able to segment, you're able to identify uh, the ideal target audience uh, for your product. Uh, number two, it's important that you're able to establish an emotional connection. And so uh, how you establish an emotional connection is addressing the 
pain point, pain point and aspirations of your target audience. Now, what do I mean with this? Uh, say you are in business and what you're offering. I remember, I'll give you a, a good example I really loved. I remember uh, someone was, was trying to sell to me, um, um, what's this, uh, 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 what are, um, this, what's it called? A water filter. Someone was trying to tell to me a water filter. Well, I didn't think I needed a water filter, but I considered it. Why? They were able to share with me how um, if I had the water filter, I would save myself a lot of money in buying bottled water. And so for a minute there, I was sold. And I was like, okay, this is something I'd be able to buy. But the only reason why I didn't purchase it because the water filter um, filters are large quantities of water, which is not what I need for my household. So while it was a good solution, it just wasn't a good solution for my household. But I felt that emotional connection of telling me that I'll actually be able to make a few savings for him. And then the other thing you need to do is make your pitch relevant to your audience. Make your pitch relevant to your audience. Imagine you are an organization and um, uh, try not to use a controversial um, example, but you are an organization and you're trying to, to pitch, you know, to, 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 talk, to talk about, um, you know, uh, reducing uh, FGM, for example, uh, you know, reducing FGM in a community, okay? And, and probably as an organization, you intend to be based in, in the urban areas you know, of, of, of your country. So, well, well, good, but not really relevant because that's not the kind of audience that you need. If you want to talk about uh, female genital mutilation, uh, the relevant audience would be probably in the village where they actually practice. And if you went there and spoke to the old, um, not really the old people, okay, the old people, the older generation that, um, engages in this then it will be more relevant uh, to reach them so yeah make you uh, make sure that your pitch is relevant again i really really apologize i can assure you 30 minutes ago these slides are looking fantastic but nevertheless uh, we shall continue and so uh so i'll read the next slide and then we'll move to the slide after that and so we come to now you're saying okay um this is very nice I've been able to identify my target audience. Um, I feel like I've kind of got it together with my messaging. Um, you know, quite simple. Uh, I've identified the target group. So how do I go in? You know, how do I go in with how I want to make uh, my pitch presentation? So what I'll do is I'll share with you uh, the structure, the guiding structure to preparing your pitch presentation. So number one, the reason why you're pitching is because you've identified there's a problem. So, you know, whatever the problem, define the problem that you are addressing. If you are a business, you know, I mean, as simple as you you're selling to, you're selling electronic de devices, okay? You're selling electronic devices. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? Or as complicated as or you are pitching or, uh, you know, for, for, for you have an idea, you have an idea uh, related to AI and, you know, you're pitching to an investor. So there's a problem, definitely. So make sure you define your problem. The next thing, once you have the problem, the reason why you're pitching is because you probably feel there's something you can be able to do. That's what we call your solution. And then our, the next thing you're able to do is look at the market. Okay, fine. We have a problem, we have a solution. So who is involved? That's your target audience. And then, all right, let me go back to the uh, electronics, okay? Um, it wasn't prudent for you to say, um, I'll, I'll establish an, an electronics um, stall. I'll establish an ex electronics stall uh, in, in a supermarket where there are other five electronic stores. So it's important to analyze your competition. Probably, will it make sense to take your stall or to an upcoming uh, mall, for example, where there's no electronic stall. So just a simple example to help you understand who is your competition. And then um, traction, show progress. 
when you're pitching, anyone listening to you, especially this goes to business people, anyone listening to you wants to know the journey, wants to know where are you coming from. And if I'm to invest in you, if I'm to put my resources in you, if I'm to work together with you, you know, where are we coming from? Where are we headed to? And then uh, the, 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 the moving to the last part, you know, in case you have a team you're working with or even yourself, you know, highlight your skills, highlight your team, highlight the skills of your team, highlight what you can do, highlight the value that you bring to the table. And then finally, the beauty of a pitch, why it's called a pitch and probably not uh, a preaching, you know, is because at the end of it all, there's a why you're engaging in this conversation. So the why you should never forget. So make sure to go in and ask uh, for what you need. And then after that, you know, just do a quick summary of, of what you, you're presenting on the scene. And so uh, very quickly, um, just, you know, as a, as a quick run, run is to once again, take you through that. So number one, the problem, make sure you introduce your story by personalizing the problem. Create tension. Well, um, I hear this a lot. Sometimes young people say, um, but I'm not dramatic and creative, you know, like some people to be able to, to create tension and, you know, have that. We, we, we always say uh, you form an impression. People form an impression of you uh, in the first uh, eight seconds of you speaking. So, and, and they, they're listening to an, an idea in the past two minutes. So, you know, some people are always like, but I don't have a baba boom, okay? So some of us are lucky. We are able to have a baba boom when it comes to a presentation. But if you don't, you know what? That's okay. So while you introduce your story, we usually say there are different ways, there are different things you can do. Number one, use statistics, you know? Uh, look, look at the data around uh, the problem you have, share that. If you're an organization, Again, I'll use the example of FGM. Um, I'm, I'm currently working with an FGM project in Tanzania in a certain village. And you know, the, 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 I, I got the statistics and I was like, wow, because they say 33% uh, of girls in primary school are likely to fall uh, pregnant. And you know, that's the statistics. You go like, wow, 33 is a big number. That means one out of every three girls has a probability of falling pregnant while in primary school. So you're already able to uh, grab attention. So, you know, uh, I think the idea is just find a way uh, to, to grab the attention of your audience while uh, talking about the problem. And then the second thing is in the solution. You know, when you're offering a solution, you're giving hope. You're giving a promise to be able to resolve the problem. You are able to showcase the main features that make the solution possible, building your potential investors or uh, or funders uh, confidence in your solution. So again, I'll, I'll try to be very diverse because of the different things that we have in this group. Uh, so, you know, um, you are looking at, um, I, I want to look at one of the innovations that I've, I've come across that were really, you know, interesting. So I'll give you one uh, from Kenya. You know, uh, you've been able to look at, at market, you've been able to look at how agricultural products are transferred uh, from the market from the farmer to the market and you realize we have people called middlemen you know uh, who are exploiting the farmers so you come up with an application and this is something which exists in Kenya and you come up with an app uh, to be able to link the farmers directly to the market so you see that's an actual solution that you are offering so always make sure um, that the solution you're offering is is is, is one good offers a uh, I wanted to say offers a solution, but offers a solution uh, to what? Offers a solution to, to the problem at hand. And, you know, just gives hope that things will be better because of what you're offering, things will be better. And then uh, when it comes to your market, um, it's important to do research. Um, uh, I'm trying to get the best way to explain this to you. When you talk about your market, make sure you do research and you are sure. Remember, you are pitching because you believe this solution you're offering works. You are pitching because you know that, uh, you know, what you're bringing to the table is of value and, uh, and it, it will influence, you know, whatever problem we are addressing. So it's very keen, you know, make sure to do your research, identify your market, 
you know, we talked about the segmentation. No, who is in the market? And let, uh, you know, in, in a few minutes, I'll be coming to, to you just being able to identify your competition, okay? So it's important to understand your market, the product, uh, the service you're bringing, where, where are you bringing it to? Who is the uh, consumer of the thing? And then, you know, uh, looking at your competition, I think um, that's, that's a bit easy. Uh, we are looking at, are there people with a similar product? Are there people with a similar service? Um, you know, you, you, you are a community engagement. Well, not really competition, but probably are there people you can collaborate with? And who knows, even save resources because uh, your, your, your plan, your work plan is probably in the same area. So rather than working independently, it would be better off if you worked uh, collaboratively. So those are questions to be able to ask. But also the other thing you can be able to look at under competition is, you know, potential risks. What are some of the risks uh, that that could could be available to you? And what are some of the opportunities that are, are, are available to you? And then uh, on traction, I think I've been able to share that. And I want to re-emphasize, re-emphasize on the traction. You know, we talked about a story. So each and every one of us has a journey. Each and every one of us has a journey. Even if it's that innovation I'm talking about where you've gotten a light bulb moment and you want investors to be able to invest in the same. You know, uh, can, you able to, can you be able to give a journey of even how you, you know, the journey of developing the application that you're pitching? Always give that journey because what it does is it gives uh, confidence. Um, to business people, you know, uh, probably you've been, I'll go back to my initial example, you've been uh, selling, you know, beauty products, and now you're thinking, you know what, I am empowered, I am a business study student, and in fact, what I think we need is, uh, is, a, is, is, is a, what's it called, is supply, ensuring that I bring in more supply of this product because I've realized this market. So anyway, traction is your story. And what it does is it offers uh, confidence that you actually have an ability to execute because it gives a record of success, no matter how big or no matter how strong, uh, no matter how small. But also the other thing is, you know, traction is the story before and the story after. So where do you intend to go uh, with this, your pitch? So that's what traction is about. I think the team, uh, depending on your team, make sure to... Um, present to them very, very well. Make sure to present your team uh, very well. Share the strengths. Share the strengths in relation to the pitch. Okay. Yeah. Like you noticed in my, in my, in, my, in the introduction of who I am, I shared my strengths in relation to uh, why I'm a good facilitator for this session. So always make sure you share the strengths of your team uh, in relation to the pitch. And then finally, finally, this is my favorite part. So how do you narrow in down and ask for the dollars? How do you narrow in down and ask for that funding? How do you narrow in down and say, support me? You know, and you know, let me personalize it a, uh, a bit. How do you narrow down and say, be my mentor? Because I, I feel that is something uh, so many of us are need, especially as we start out in our journey. So ask, ask, ask. You've made all this speech. So ask, what do you want? Tell us what you want. And so after that, you're able to summarize. And so um, as a next step, uh, as able to just see how is it, you know, speaking about this, how, uh, what, what example can I give? And this is a business example. I was like, what business example can I give that simply illustrates this? So very fast, I want to run through the next slides. I want to run, run through the next slides. And the case study, it's a case study of an organization called, a company called uh, Office Flex. So um, I'll, I'll appreciate if you can move to the next slide. And you know, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you a background. No, I won't give you a background to the pro problem. You can see it. So Office Flex, uh, this is a pitch by Office Flex. So uh, the person pitching uh, is Tim. And what is the problem uh, Tim is trying to solve? Uh, he feels like the market for co-working solutions is broken. So probably if there's someone who does not understand what co-working is, um, especially during the time for COVID-19, I think that's when uh, co-working really became a thing. So this is whereby, um, 
you know, especially for organizations that work uh, remotely or hybrid. So you work from home, but sometimes you need the concentration. I think all of us can talk about the temptation that comes with working from home. So you need a space where you can be able to go and work and concentrate on what you're doing. So we actually have office spaces that offer that. So different individuals can be able to walk in and work from that space. So that's what um, Tim is trying to solve here. And you know, he summarizes the problem. So Tim is one of the millions of people worldwide who work remotely, but he struggled to find a co-working space that offers the right mix of location, pricing, amenities, and safety. As a consequence, his commute is worse. His productivity is down, he wasted money shopping around, and he's missed networking opportunities. His laptop has even been stolen. So Tim sat down and he did his research and he realized 95% of employees want to control how, when, and where they work. 76 of C-suite executives want to subsidize co-working spaces for their remote employees. And 89 of co-working users report being happier since joining a co-working space. And so, you know, just moving in the same uh, idea, we look at the solution. So what is the solution that Tim is offering? So he's offering the first co-working recommendation engine. And what is this? It's called Office Flex. So using a potent pending allegor algorithm, Office Flex finds the perfect co-working option for Tim based on his preferred work style, location, amenities, and budget. Office Flex handles all the bookings and payments and plugs him into a community. Wow, who would not want that, really? beautiful beautiful solution and what does this lead to tim's productivity improves when his preferences are met he enjoys co-working and becomes a loyal user number two tim's employer provides him with monthly office flex credits the subsidy makes him feel valued and he becomes a loyal employee and number three tim can find a second working place near his kid's school and use on couple days he feels like a better dad and remains a loyal user perfect solution so we move to the next step, market. So, well, we know about team, but, you know, where are the other teams? What is our market like? So, uh, so again, they did their research and identified, according to Jansler, approximately one in seven remote workers use for working spaces in the U.S. That's a good number. Uh, we anticipate these will, will become our first customers. And so, uh, again, they look at the data, you know, uh, looking at, that uh, around the US, we're looking at 12 million remote or hybrid workers in the US whom we can be able to tap into. Our remote or flexible workers in New York, Boston, and Charlotte, where this is focused, are 750K. And so, you know, just doing a narrowing it down, you know, um, uh, if we are to look at the Office Flex customers in our target area, then we are looking at around 107,000. Not a bad number. And so the next thing we look at is the competition, all right? So, so far, so good. We are doing well. Um, we've been able to look at our problem. We've been able to look at a solution. We can tell, yes, there's a market. But um, uh -huh. isn't there anything hidden? Why is this story too perfect to be true? Actually, it is not. Why? We've, we've been able to say uh, the market for co-working space is currently served by companies that manage and service only their own floor space. So imagine if you can make it flexible. There's no one doing that. So in terms of competition, well, we'll be the first in the market. Why? Um, the other companies are not offering a wide variety of workspace configurations. They're not offering competitive uh, uh, pricing, and they're not offering multiple convenient locations. So on competition, we are good. But again, the question comes, all right, so is there any risk we should be aware of? Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing, uh, someone, uh, the first risk probably is employees use Office Flex to shop and not to buy. And then, uh, you know, in the event that remote work reduces, that means uh, we do not have clients. And also uh, the other risk is, you know, this is a brilliant idea, but imagine if the operators of the, of the, of the venues decline to participate then we have a problem but that's not likely to happen hopefully so let's continue so the next thing is you know what you're talking about um the traction 
So you're able to give your numbers. You're able to give your journey. You can see right there, we are looking at today. We're seeing 85% of quarterly growth in annual uh, recurring revenue. We have 900 unique monthly users. And you know the first business to business validation with three large employer contracts. So that's a good thing. You know, we are saying uh, we had a fear people would not participate, you know, not bad. And so what are we looking at? Where do we want to go? Okay, so those are the digits for today. And 12 months from now in the projection, what are we looking at? Where are we going? So that is clear. Uh, that is very well, that is very, very well uh, done. And then uh, we move on to the, to the next slide. And you know, we are looking at the pitch. So I think, you know, now it's like I'm pitching to you, sitting on the other side, you're thinking, okay, this is a good idea. So who's behind this? Who's, you know, we're talking about, we're talking about a, a, lot, a lot of office work. We talked about the financing system. We talked about a system that connects one, two, three people. You know, uh, how do we probably, I'm thinking, you're thinking, okay, HR, there's a problem, someone needs to call. How do we get to them? And, you know, you come in and talk about your team. Who is behind, um, you know, the whole project and who will be supporting? So you're able to share, you know, yourself as the CEO. You're talking about your COO. You're talking about your HR manager. You're talking about your communications personnel. Again, remember, uh, make sure uh, to, um, to clearly articulate uh, their skills in relation to, to the pitch. And then finally, you know, you close it down. And so we've had this conversation for a very long time together. And so the question becomes, uh-huh, where are we headed? And so finally, you're able to say the ask. So you say, uh, this is the money that we've been able to invest. And uh, this is what we're asking from you. This is the money we've been able to invest. This is what we're asking from you. Can you be able to look into it? Why not, you know? So make sure to finish your close. Uh, with an ask in a very confident way. You know, after you've been able to give your traction, you've said we're coming from here, we're going here, and you know, you, you're asking. So uh, you have these resources, invest in me. You're saying, uh, you have these resources, bring the funding to us, we are able to handle it. You're saying, you have this engagement, I am a professional, I am able to handle it, give it to me. And so that's very important. And those, I would say, are the steps to be able to create your pitch and i hope it's very clear again you're welcome to start uh giving your questions and you know any comments you might have in the conversation but i want to speak to a very um special group of people and you know uh, these are individuals i mean and all of us especially being young people i personally uh always advocate for our uh use Use everything you've got, you know, use everything you've got. And what do I mean? Uh, you know, uh, probably you've studied to be a doctor, but you can sing, you can play the guitar, you can play the piano, um, you're a poet, okay? Or you're able to do design work, you're able to do design work. These are skills um, I'm very proud that as young people, you know, we are multi-skilled as a generation. And so, you know, most of us will have a lot of time. So while you may be able to, you know, pitch as a business, but it's also important you're able to pitch as an individual. And so very sh shortly, I want to cover how do you pitch your brand as a professional? So again, you're an artist. You know, I think there, there are very different ways uh, we engage as, as professionals, but how do you pitch your brand as a professional? And I know this is very embarrassing. I am seeing my slides and I feel like sliding down the chair but please, again, I beg for your apology. This was beyond me. I beg for your apology. But number one, define your personal brand. What makes you unique? What do you want to be known for? I'll give you a good example. Um, I, I particularly admire a brand of a friend of mine who calls himself an a, a SDG, a Sustainable Development Goals Advocate, and has been very keen to mobilize young people towards raising awareness on SDG goals. I never knew that's a brand you can develop, but he's done it very well. Why? Because he decided, I want to be known as an SDG champion, and he's curated his brand towards that. And guess what? Especially for the NGOs, because one of the key, key things we are pushing for is, uh, uh, is 
SDGs in everything that we do. So they're able to invite him to share how organizations can actually be able to integrate young people to support SDG organizations. The point, identify what is unique about yourself. Number two, showcase your unique strengths. You know, uh, you're able to highlight your achievements, experiences, and qualifications. I'll go, you know, um, probably, I'll use an example of an artist or you're a performing artist. Um, try to see a good example. You're able to play, uh, what's it called? Not a trumpet, um, a violin. You're able to play a violin. So imagine uh, making a pitch, making a pitch to, to the head of state, you know, whoever organizes the head of state events and telling them, um, you know what, when you're having a, a, a state event, I would like to, to play the violin the national anthem using the violin. So, and you know, you're able to state, uh, I've been able to perform here, perform here, perform here, do this. And so the idea showcase your unique strengths. And then the other thing, hey, I cannot emphasize, re-emphasize this enough. Your carbon print on social media, what you do on social media should create a brand for yourself. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, not Twitter. X, make sure your brand speaks on these platforms because when you're telling someone, I'm able to do this, the first thing we do nowadays is Google. We Google you. And in fact, I can challenge you. Go Google. Google yourself. That's how I, I create my brand online. I go Google. Sofina Merino. And then see what comes up. So my challenge to you is Google yourself and then you have time. Start working on your brand online so that it reflects uh, who you are. And even when people are looking for you and you're pitching, they can, there's actually evidence to support what you've been able to do. And so uh, the other thing, uh, you know, uh, again, the other question someone will, will be asking is, all right, fine, that's fine. But even if you Google me now, there's nothing you'll find because I've not been able to establish a brand. I mean, I'm freshly out of school. So that's okay. Uh, the other thing you can be able to do is pitch your skills, you know? Um, identify your key skills, what's your strength, what sets you apart. I think it's just like a job interview. In a job interview, no one has seen you before, but you're able to pitch uh, the key skills that you have. And then the other thing, talk about your strengths. Talk about your strengths. You know, um, I'm trying to look for a very good example that will, that will run across board. Probably you're starting an organization and you have this brilliant idea and you've identified your problem. And you know, you're like, okay, where do I start? Well, definitely start by opening a bank account and getting your documentation in order and writing a proposal. But as an individual, it's okay uh, to highlight your soft skills. Uh, you know, talk about how you have skills you can go into the community and convince people probably to come and attend a conference, okay? On sexual and reproductive health awareness, uh, on, on issues of, you know, right now we are celebrating 16 days of GBV, you know? You can be able to mobilize and raise awareness. It's okay to highlight your skills. And then uh, sometimes provide examples and proof of concept. It doesn't have to be mega. You coming from campus, you are able to, you know, using the same example, you're able to mobilize your fellow students to attend um, events, celebratory events in the university. That's a good place to start. That's your success story for now. And then personalize to different audience. How you'd pitch, uh, I think I've mentioned that enough times, how you'd pitch to say a fund that's very different uh, from how you'd pitch from, for those of us who have family, you know, how you'd pitch to your mother and tell her, you know, just put your money here. I have faith in this. It's different from how you'd go to a networking event and, you know, probably to pitch to someone who can invest a uh, real good money in it. And then uh, the other thing, again, social media, I cannot overemphasize Keep updating your resume, especially now as you get started. A small success that you encounter, you know what? Put it up there. Put it up there. Any detail that you're able to engage with, put it up there. At the end of the day, uh, that contributes to your brand and it helps in your pitch and to support your pitch. Very shortly, I'll be coming to, you know, at the end of the pitch. Well, that's good. Done. You have pitched. They have said, yes, good you've gotten the initial, or you, you know, you're still trying to see how is it um, we can be able to engage further. So I think I cannot overemphasize this enough. 
make sure to update your resume and update on social media. I mean, that's why we have Facebook. When you, wear, when you buy new clothes, you update it there. You might as well update the projects you're engaging with. So that's the point. Why pitching matters? I mean, pitching is very important because for one, you raise awareness. You raise awareness about what you're doing. You know, uh, when you talk about pitch, you know, someone said, I'd like to be able to know how to present in three minutes. That's what we're calling an elevator pitch. Short, concise, straight to the point, hits the right nerves, gets your point across. And if you're lucky, it's persuasive and you're able to close the deal. That's number one. Number two, you're able to tell a story. People again, 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 I cannot overemphasize. And this is really in anything in life. Tell a story. Tell a story because stories are more relatable. It's easier, uh, you know, um, it's easier to, to relate to a story rather than that just statistics out there um, that are speaking to something. Not to undervalue the value of statistics, but not on a pitch. On a pitch, tell your story. We'll get the pamphlets later to look at the statistics. Number three, um, you know, you're able to focus on the, on the problem you're solving and on your solution. You know, when you're able to pitch, people are able to see, yes, that's a good thing you're doing there and we'd like to engage with that. And then uh, your pitch also enables you to uh, explain your business model. So, you know, um, I talked about, you know, talking about what you've done, what you're able to do, where you see your projections. So it's very simple. You're able to, you know, if it's a business and you're saying, invest your money here, you're able to say, um, so I'll take your money, do this. It will multiply three times fold. And there, we have a success story. So with pitching, you're able to uh, explain your business model. And then um, finally, you're able to uh, describe your target market and you're able to convince an individual uh, to be able to engage with you. And also just share your milestones. Talk about where you, you're coming from and where you intend to go. So that's very, very important. And then finally, you know, you're able to ask. You're really able to ask for what you want. I want you to support us with funding activities. This is the outline of what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, who we are going to do it to, how we will engage. Please give us the money. We'll do a good job. This is my business idea. I need X and X capital. What, what, will, what will happen? This is the market we'll be able to sell. I guarantee you two times the profit. We're good to go. You've achieved your objective. And so uh, with that, uh, it's, it's very important. It's, it's, very, it's very keen uh, to be able to understand why the pitch matters. And so in conclusion, um, as we move to the next slide, um, I think then uh, the question becomes, uh, so this is just a summary of what I've shared with you. You know, um, and this is the assignment I'll give you. I think uh, there's some of you who have said uh, you'd like to do your pitches. So this is, you know, uh, pointers. Make sure you hook your audience, present your problem, showcase your solution, give a call to action. And so, yeah, that's just a simple way uh, to, to, to enable you. And so simple tips. So here we are, uh, you know, you've been able to walk through and you've been able to see um, how, how, how to draft your pitch. But what are those tips? So number one, visual storytelling. If you can use slides, the better. Number two, data visualization. You know, if you're able to make a presentation and you're able to, in a creative way, well, I tried here, I tried, but you know, just being able to uh, show your data in a very creative way. Uh, if you're talking about your market, uh, probably, you know, now in the age of social media, you want to start a YouTube channel on something and, and you, you're telling a certain organization, you know, these are the numbers I have on, on, these are the numbers of followers I have. You know, show that very well. Indicate that. My following on this platform, my following on, my following on Facebook, my following on Instagram, that's what will get the company hooked uh, to be able to engage with you. And then finally, uh, your slide design. Make sure you have a very good, clean, uh, professional slide design that emphasizes the content and enhances uh, the visual impact. And so uh, the other thing, uh, so that's on your presentation, on yourself as an individual, practice, practice, practice. I can assure you, I'm able to speak with such confidence, even with a field or, uh, 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 you know, uh, vi video projection, because I'm able to practice and understand uh, what I'll be speaking about today. And then number two, engage with language you know uh, well, use your arms <laughs> use your eyes 
use your smile, engage because it's luring and it enables people to be able to relate with you. And then speak clearly, concisely, concisely, be clear, um, avoid use of jargon, make sure everyone can understand uh, what you, you're able to say. The other thing, uh, so that's on presentation, how you look. Uh, the other thing I'd also be able to address is, uh, you know, make sure you actively listen, uh, make sure you address objections. Someone raises a question, you, you're able to address that. Make sure to build a rapport, um, even as, you, as you're able to pitch, you know. And this is engaging in a friendly manner. You know, the guys you go to pitch to, and they'll be like, no, and you can pull the energies off. It's okay. But the individuals you go are uh, and pitch to, and you can pull the energy. And sometimes, you know, you've prepared your pitch, but if something um takes you off, 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 you know, off the cuff, off what you practice, it's okay. Take the curve and then you'll come back eventually. And you know, that's what you're calling the adaptability. Just be able to be flexible um, in your pitch. And so um, that's really uh, the pointers on, on creating a pitch. So, you know, just being able to put yourself together, draft a pitch, and then being able to go and present the pitch. So it could be open or it could be closed. But finally, as we close, I think it's also to say, um, what are the things you should do once you've made your pitch? Number one, uh, take it or leave it. Always send a thank you email. Send some communication afterwards to appreciate the engagement that you had. Number two, clarify next steps. Even as you finish on this pitch, make sure you clarify. You have pitched. And then, so say, as a next step, this, this, and this. So make sure to clarify the next steps so there's no ambiguity. Number three, request feedback if possible. Number four, maintain regular communication. You know, we always say you can always drop a high uh, share. If you're a company, you can share your brochure, uh, not your brochure, you can share your information, a social media post, keep that communication going. Uh, number six, connect on social media. I mean, after this, uh, I, I'm hoping we can be able to connect with some of you on LinkedIn and keep the conversation going. And then finally, uh, even when you pitch, it can be positive, it can be negative. Sometimes you have to wait. So make sure to be patient. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've been able to get an idea on how to carry out a successful pitch, whether it's for your business, for yourself as an individual, or for your organization. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sofina. Um, so this last slide is definitely for Thursday. Um, so we are going to go through um, a few pitch on Thursday and you would go through these um, pitch examples and you ask your questions. And if you have your questions as well, you'll bring them on Thursday and Sofina will be here to go through them. Thank you all so much for staying on. That was a great presentation. And I really like the last slide. I don't know why you did not touch it. I've not seen that before. Um, you know, when it's saying that closing the deal where you, you kind of summarize everything, which is really good. Um, would that work when you are having an elevator pitch, like a one minute pitch? Oh, you're muted, sorry. So for your elevator pitch, not quite, but again, it depends on how you're able to package yourself. If you're doing a presentation, for example, like I have, you're able to summarize everything, you know, and you say it in the form of a story. So elevator pitch, it depends on the time that you have. But most of the time, because we're pitching for two or three minutes, we actually have the time. So just being able to run through the conversation. But I would encourage you, if it's an elevator pitch, get it right from the start. No one, I mean, it's one minute. How would you have a presentation and then repeat it? You understand? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so ha if it's elevator, have it right from the start. But if it's a pitch, probably you're doing uh, in front of an organization, in front of a funder. You know, you have your laptop and everything. You can be able to summarize. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much, Sofina. I can see in the chat, um, everyone is really glad they attended. And please be here on Thursday as well. So we we'll have the final webinar for the Academy for this year. Um, thank you all for attending. Over to you, Sofina, for any final words. I think um, as my final words is just to encourage each and every one of us. So number one, are, I hope you can be able to, you know, work on your individual pitches. 
Um, and when I talk about your individual pitches, is as it's as a professional, whether you're a business or an organization, but most importantly, I always like to say this to young people, as an individual, start creating your pitch as a professional. And how you do that, we've been able to outline this, but start uh, curating the journey of what you want your, your, your professional journey to be like, especially on social media. So I think um, that's it. I look forward uh, to seeing each and every one of you on Thursday. And please come with your questions. Let's let's decipher this. Let's make it a realistic conversation. And I hope we can have a conversational engagement. Thank you. Thank you so much, Safina. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday as well. Uh, for now, we'll say bye-bye until Thursday. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>